The ITB band, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions lately on how to stretch the ITB band. Well, actually we can't stretch it. It's a band, it is not a muscle. Uh, so we recently had the privilege of having Dr. Pui San over at our torture camp in Langkawi last year and then she really really shed some light on ITB band and how you can treat it. So essentially, what you need to do is to relieve um, tension on the muscles that are surrounding the ITB band because you can't really stretch. It, it's not pliable, it's not elastic, so you can't stretch it. So all those foam rolling across your ITB band seems like it doesn't do anything. So in the yoga sequences later, it's done to relieve the muscle tension uh, of the muscle groups that's surrounding the ITB band. So we have the piriformis, we have the psoas, we have the glutes, uh, and also the TFL. The TFL especially because it attaches the hip um, and it feeds into the ITB band itself all the way down to the shin bone, and all of which is why we'll also be stretching out the calves too. So obviously the next question would be how the hell did you get your ITB tight in the first place? So there's two reasons. One is be, uh, obviously due to overuse. After all of your training sessions, you should stretch out uh -huh, the muscles that are surrounding the ITB band, which is what the, the muscle groups that I mentioned earlier. Again, I will repeat them. The piriformis, the psoas, uh, the TFL, your glutes, hamstrings, quads, and also your calf. Uh, the other reason would be compensation. When your muscles are imbalanced, meaning one is stronger than the other, for example, if your quads are overused, you know, you overtrain it, it's stronger than your hamstring, so you tend to be unbalanced that way. So I always say this, that our body works like a chain, that everything is connected. So if one is stronger than the other, it's going to pull one side and this side gets lengthened and it gets weak. Which then leads back to the importance of stretching and strengthening, which is what yoga does. But if yoga is not for you, um, please do some strengthening movements, strength and conditioning. I also advocate that. Or you can even do foam rolling, go to physio massage therapists, they'll tell you too what you can do. Okay, so you find me now sitting in a comfortable position, really getting into the zone, belly breathing in and out, shaking out any tension on my shoulders and my neck. Getting ready for the ITB stretch flow. So grab your yoga blocks and a small towel. I had that wedged under my hip just to prop it up a little bit makes it more relaxing for me so come down to lying down on your back straighten both legs and start in a nice shavasana going to do the first one a gentle hip opening pose okay so just bend your left knee in pulling closer towards your chest Feeling the gentle opening of your hip flexors. Smile. So now let's intensify that stretch. Reach out for your yoga block. And we've, uh, I've shown this in the previous video where you place it right under your hip. Secure it under your hip for a nice passive back bend allowing gravity to help you opening those hips up the psoas really feel the front of the body opening and releasing and now to intensify the stretch even more pull one knee in we'll start with the left one first knee towards the chest if this feels uncomfortable for you, you can leave both legs on the, on the mat. You don't have to pull your knee in. 
or you can just do what I'm doing now which is I, I call it bouncing where I pull it in and then I, I let it go pull it in and I let it go just bouncing the leg being gentle with our stretches repeat that on the right side pull the right knee in so here I am again bouncing the legs well I call it bouncing anyway Pull and release, and you pull and release. Not being too aggressive, not being too harsh. Then we remove the yoga block, set it to the side. Okay, so one more time, pull your right knee in without the block this time, just to balance it out. We did this on the left, so we'll balance it out by doing it on the right. So now for the next pose, the happy baby pose. It's very good for your inner thighs, your inner groin, and also for your hamstrings. So reach through your in the inner arches of your feet and pull your knee closer to your armpits. Get ready to rock side to side, just to massage the back. Make sure that your hip is planted on the mat. It doesn't hike up. Rock side to side to massage the back. And now for those hamstrings, okay? I'm going to tell you first, we're going to straighten one leg out. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is optional but try as best as you can. So straightening out of the other side. We're all about balance. Okay, one more time, rocking side to side. So if you can't reach the inner arches of your feet, you can go ahead and grab onto your ankles or your calves. Moving on to the next pose. Okay, so grab your small towel, hook onto one of your foot, and straighten that leg up as straight as you can. If you can't get it this straight, it's fine, just as long as you feel the stretch at the back of your legs, your hamstring, the calves, get to feel it on your butt. The more you pull your foot in, the more you feel it on your on your calf. So make sure that you're you have that foot in flexion, planting your hip down, holding it for 30 seconds or more. Okay, next, so let's move that stretch to the outside of our glutes by moving the legs across the midline of our body. I can really, really, every time I do this, it feels, well, well, there's a sensation. Okay, so keeping the hips grounded on the mat at all times. Things that you should not do, lifting off the hip, no, no. Bring it back down. So the only thing that moves is the top leg. Moving across the body, across the chest. I do know that some of you may not be able to um, lift the leg as uh, high as this. It doesn't have to come as high as this. If it goes 45 degree angle, that's fine too, as long as you feel the stretch. So now I'm moving the leg out outside of the body it's an abduction movement going away from the body opening up through the hips again if you cannot open that wide or that high uh, it's fine just um, do the best you can at whatever level that you are in right now coming back to
just be great. I never took your picture on my phone. Doesn't mean you just up on my mind. Just because I accidentally slid the legs to release the hips. The Malasana, so we start with feet hip width apart with your foot turned out and we're going to sink low into a deep squat. So if you can't squat low enough comfortably, use a block or a whatever uh, prop that you have, it can sit on and then depending on how flexible your hips are, even the position of your foot you can um, adjust it yourself, keep it wide or keep it narrow. So this is all for the hips. For the groin. So I'm just going to show, um, well, the fuller, fullest expression of Malasana as I can. So sinking in low, bringing the feet closer to each other. Okay, you can try this. Bring the knees in and then pushing it out with your elbows, opening through the groin. And stay there for 30 seconds. Now for the quads. Step forward into a nice low lunge then you're going to lower down to your knee sink your hip closer to the mat as low as possible to feel the stretch on your hip flexor flatten the back foot remember that you can always use your yoga block as an extra support just to make it more comfortable for you to stay in this position. If you want to, you can even use the small towel to pad um, the, the, your back knee. Now for the quad stretch. I'm going to lift the back foot in and pull your foot closer to your glutes. And if you can't reach your, your foot, go ahead and use your towel to assist you. So I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Immediately I'm reaching up for the yoga block. Sinking down to a low lunge. Flattening out the back foot. 30 seconds. Holding this hip opening. Pose for 30 seconds. Now for the quad, back foot comes in. Pull closer toward your glutes. And hold for 30 seconds. Okay, just going to show you um, how to use the towel or the strap. Just go ahead and catch your back foot and pull it in. Pull in as close as you can towards your glute and hold. And release. Come to a tabletop position. Push back to a downward dog. Stretching out the entire posterior chain from the heel all the way up to the tips of your fingers, sinking the heels down. If your heel can't touch to the mat, um, you can try this first. You can just focus on one leg at a time, pedaling or, or cycling the leg. Opening up the back of the body until the heel completely sinks down to the mat. Bring one leg in for the pigeon. 
I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this pose by now. It's very good for your hips, for your psoas. Just make sure that you're squaring the hips. Then come down, sink down if you can. Come back up. Of course, you're going to hold the pose for 30 seconds. And then repeat it on the other side. Come down to a pigeon pose. Good for your butt. Your glutes. I should not be so crass. Good for your glutes, good for your hips, good for your TFL. Come all the way down. Good for your hip. Good for so many things. I think that's why this is everyone's go-to pose. The famous pigeon. Holding for 30 seconds. Alright, then come back up. Up to a plank, push back to a downward dog. Rest in downward dog. Or you can sink down to rest in child's pose.